started probably about five years ago when I first realised that actually the opportunities in reality for girls were very different to that for boys. Um, and started seeing the barriers that they faced. My daughter at the time was five, six years old. Um, and I thought, well, we need to kind of basically do something about this so I can either moan about it or I can get involved and try and work out how we kind of change the face for girls' football. So way back when we set up um, a Wildcat, in effect what is now a Wildcats group, but a novice girls' group, and we just really tapped up anyone we knew, all the siblings of all the boys here. We have about 400 players here at Blue Star. So if anybody had a sibling, we said, why don't you get your daughters playing uh, down here? We had about 33 from the outset, so we had a really good start. Really mixed age, because obviously it was quite new and it's in its infancy, so we had everything from five-year-olds to 12-year-olds, but it was enough to run a really effective session, and then we've just grown and grown and grown. Um, it's grown legs and arms and we currently have 10 teams and as you can see behind me uh, around 24 Wildcats who are aged 5 to 7 years old. I was involved in the original Wildcats uh, project uh, when it was in its infancy and it's really a barrier free way of getting girls into football. You don't need to know anything about it, you don't really need a kit. It's great if you have it, but we'll allow you to play without because, you know, it's not a full on contact sport when you first join Wildcats. It's all about fun and friendship. It's competitive but non-competitive. So the onus isn't on winning. It's actually learning how to control the ball and playing games with balls um, and just really fun games around narratives and silly stories. And there's plenty of time for the girls to chat, do cartwheels, whatever they feel that they want to do in there because it's their session. It's not ours and it's really just building their confidence around playing football. I think the landscape has changed dramatically over the last five years. I'm not saying it's perfect, but I think that a lot of the stigma around girls football has gone uh, or has certainly been eroded. We're getting more and more girls literally coming in every week. Um, I don't think a girl in a class is unusual now if they play football. They're now bringing their friends even more than they used to. I think more and more clubs are actually realising it's not that difficult to do girls football. You might have to do things a little bit different to really attract the girls. Um, but when we started here, we were you know, one of the few in the area and we were a bit of a novelty really, which is why we grew so fast because everybody realised we were suddenly doing it and doing it properly. Um, and we have encouraged through the Wildcats program getting loads of other clubs saying, look, we can, you can do this, you can do this, it's not difficult. I'll come down and help you, talk to me. Um, talk me through what, what you're worried about um, and it's really it is a little bit different from boys football at times it looks and feels a little bit different but it's just as easy to actually do it's just a slightly different mind frame I am I never believed I would um, I did my level one so that I was more informed and could help get girls football here at Blue Star running by basically getting involved myself because everybody's always short of coaches every club has the same issue Having done that, loads of people kept saying to me, why don't you do your level two? I was like, absolutely no way. Um, and then I was lucky to get sponsored by Man City to do it for my contribution to girls football. So then I couldn't wheedle out of it. Um, and I absolutely loved it. Absolutely, it was the best thing I ever did. Uh, made a huge difference to my coaching, huge difference to my confidence about coaching, much better understanding how to structure sessions and really how to tune in with the kids to make sure it is their session and not, and not just a session you've put on. So yeah, best thing I ever did. Personally, it's, it, sometimes any coach is better than no coach and a really good coach is a really good coach whether they're male and female. But what you actually really notice, especially here with the girls and the Wildcat novices, if Carla and Lauren aren't here or me, they're a bit like, oh, oh, where's, where's my coach? Because they, they really do associate with that sort of female role model that it's not all men teaching them, it's actually women, it's girls, it's people that look and feel like them. Um, and we've had Lauren down here today in her ref top uh, and I was saying, well, guess what else ref Lauren does? Because again, it's role modelling that it's not just coaches, it's not just players, you can actually be a ref if you're a girl as well. And that see it, believe it, see it, be it, it's very, very powerful for these kids. I would love to see more females dip their toe, uh, step over the line as I say. We do nudge them in because we, we get mums involved on the sideline and say look, like tonight we've got a couple of dads helping whilst um, just, uh, just get over the fear of it. Um, anybody can do it, I did it. That, I mean that's the one thing I do say to people all the time. I didn't know what I was doing, I just thought oh well I'm, there's one thing I can do to change this is to actually become a coach. 
So I became a coach, not really knowing what I was doing. Um, and then you gain, you work with other coaches and the coaching community will always support you, particularly in female friendly clubs. Um, if there's any females that want to even have a go, help out, um, you know, put on a jacket, help on match day, all the coaching community will help you do that because everybody wants more females involved. The Women and Girls Working Group uh, meets a few times a year really just to look at how things are progressing. We've got some real key indicators, how many female players have we got, how many female coaches, are we seeing more female refs and we look at in initiatives and supporting clubs to really involve, uh, improve participation in all those areas. So we sit down and we look at what leagues are running, what clubs, how many wildcat centres we've got. We look at areas where there are no wildcat centres. Can we help those clubs? Can we encourage more clubs to get involved? We'll go down and see them. As I say, we'll, we'll meet with them. We'll talk to them on the phone. We'll invite them down here to say, look, come and see how it is. All with the, the aim of increasing female participation. And, and where there is female participation, make it a better offer make sure that it's doing everything it needs to do for the little girls, the teenagers and the women players. Uh, the Euros is going to be fantastic, uh, everyone will tell you that. What I am actually anticipating, because we had it last year, is we're going to get a massive influx of girls coming in. So we're all going to be scrabbling around looking for pitches. We'll be redoing our pitch plans, working out how we can get even more teams through. Because I actually do genuinely think you will see a lot more girls coming in.